Hey up everybody, I think I'm on fifth take of this, so I've wrote it down what I've got to say. <laughs> so today then, I'm going to start on a project which I'm embarking on with the eight other collaborators and I think they're all YouTubers. Now to cut a long story short, how, it, how, it was, how it's come about uh, is Nigel at Go Create Hobby Machine Shop, he's organised all this. Here's his uh, YouTube channel if you want to take a look. What Nigel has been doing this in his latest project is a baby vice. Now to cut a long story short, when he got this vice more or less completed, he was contacted by somebody from the USA. His name's George Aldroyd from Alabama, USA. And George runs a Veterans and Scouts non not-for-profit knife making uh, workshop and it's for veterans to be able to do metal work and artwork and he said to Nigel he could use one of them little vices well he actually said I think he could use three <laughs> what Nigel's done in one of his latest videos is put it out to all all his, all his followers would anybody like to help on this project and to cut a, uh, I keep saying to cut a long story short but I'm, I get waffling if I don't keep reminding myself there's eight other people and I'm one of them that's said to Nigel yeah we'll, we'll give you a hand so Nigel's done a, a schedule of a, a work which is gift to everybody now and I know Nigel's doing the bulk of the work he's doing all the major components but is spread the other components out between these between us eight other collaborators. Now the work is the work is given me. It's not um, it's nothing major. It's not nothing time consuming. Uh, I've, it's just asked me to make the T bolts for the for the vise. And there's just two components, and I've got to make six of each. They're only M5, which is equivalent to a probably a 2BA screw. Just before I get into that though I'd like to say this before I forget if anybody would like to uh, donate to this um, project specifically mainly f probably for materials and um, more so for getting the, the postage to send these vices over to the USA uh, you can either contact me or contact Nigel and if you contact me all I'll do is um, redirect you to Nigel and it would be very helpful no matter how small the donations are it would be very helpful for the postage I think uh, right so back to me then what I'm going to be doing then is making these T nuts now the only M5 the size of the, the actual bolt that fits into the nut and uh, I could quite easily go ahead get some 5mm diameter bar run my die nut down make the piece for the bottom lock tight it in it, the opportunity here to to do the threading on the lathe now I know some people might say well what's you want to go and thread such a small bolt like that why not put a die down it well, I'm going to use this opportunity just to show people how, well, show the people that don't know how they can do a metric thread on a Myford Imperial lathe without having to buy a full set of uh, metric change wheels, which would run into probably probably hundreds of pounds. So, going back to the Myford, then to do this metric cutting on an Imperial Marford lathe uh, how I'm going to show you you'll need the latest version of the quick change gearbox because I think the older versions have got a cover on this on this side with two extra gears on which in turn makes the gears in the gear train slightly different it still can be done but it can't be done my way that I'm going to show you well, I say my way, the way I've been learnt to do it. Uh, I've been learnt to do it from uh, probably back in my apprentice days. Yeah, so you'll have to have that up-to-date 
latest uh, quick change toolbox. Toolbox. So I'm only showing you this method what, uh, that's compatible with my method. So I'll move over to workbench and we'll have a look at how I'm going to do this. Right, so what I'm going to be doing then for this uh, coll collaboration project for this baby vice, I'm just making the T-bolts, there's six of, there's two components, uh, it's a threaded portion, it's an M5 thread with a thread on each end and then the T-nut which is uh, an angular T-nut or a radial T-nut should I say, is fastened to the bottom. So rather than just run the die down these I'm going to go over to Myford and show you how to do a metric me metric thread on an imperial Myford. So originally for an imperial screw cutting lathe on, on Myford with a quick change gearbox you've got a 24 tooth here. I've took this 24 tooth off I've put the 33 tooth on uh, so it's just a matter of undoing that screw and down here Bit on the banjo here there's a nut you've got to loosen that nut off you may have to loosen this clamping bolt off at the back and then you've just got to push that banjo down put the gear on put the screw back in then pull the banjo back up until these gears are meshing with a, a couple of thou clearance in the room you don't want them uh, too tight and then reclamp the banjo bolt and the clamping bracket stood there. So by changing this one gear from a 24 to a 33 tooth and also if you've got a 34 tooth wheel to, to put on here as well that gives you a really good range of metric threads that you can cut on an imperial lathe and that saves you having to replace all these change wheels uh, with a metric set which I don't know that would probably cost a few hundred pound perhaps here's my chart then I've had to rewrite this chart out because my original one were getting grotty I've had it for donkey's years so I'm doing an M M5 thread with a 0.8 pitch so I've got to change the stud gear to a 33 which I've just shown you set my gearbox to 44 teeth per inch and that will cut me 0.794 millimeter pitch now when you work that out into um, when you work the error out we're talking of less than two tenths of a thousandth of an inch so with a 34 and a 33 gear you can get most of these metric threads you do in some cases need a 25 and a 21 but we'll, we'll not go into that you can get most of them with 33, 34 and the original one that's on 24 some of the pitches for example the M61 mil pitch it's, it's, it's bang on but most of them slightly vary on the pitch and when I say slightly vary I mean slight it, we're talking a, at the most three tenths of a thousandth of an inch error and for the hobbyist that's uh, it's negligible so what I've done then I've got the 33 gear fitted onto me onto me lathe now now I did have a 34 tooth one but I've, I've either mislaid it or I've lent it to somebody and I never got it back so what I'm doing I'm making another one uh, I'm making another gear uh, simple to do really if you've got a mini mill and a simple um, dividing head I'll show you in another video how to make the 34 and the 33 tooth gear well that's for another day so here's, here's 44 on my screw cutting gearbox which is lever C to the right and the selector in number 5 position which is 44 so now my lathe set up now for doing a 0.8 millimeter pitch 
so once you've got your tool ground up to the gauge <clears throat> first job then is to make sure it's exactly on center height uh, I made this uh, this height gauge for, for using on my lathes I've got my outside diameter turned down now to 5mm um, I'm working in Imperial on diameters so it's 197 thousandths uh, I'm now ready for screw cutting uh, it's a metric thread so it's 60 degrees uh, I've got my tool set at 90 degrees to the um, face of the chuck I'm just going to put a little chamfer on this end I'm going to do the 8mm thread to start with while it's attached to the rest of the bar. Once I've got that cut, I'm going to part it off at 19mm. I'm going to do all the other five the same. Then I'm going to turn them round in the chuck and put the 3mm um, length of thread on the other end. I've got my compound slit at zero. I'm just going to put this ruler onto the face of the job, set the point of my tool onto that, onto the edge of that face. Well, now I've got that set, I've eyeballed that point up to edge of job. I'm going to move over with my compound slide, 315,000. I'm just going to touch on to the job now, just to give me a mark where I know I've got to screw cut to. I'm not going to put an undercut in this, I'm just going to, I'm going to pull my tool out just as I get to the, to this mark. So I've got the mark for the length of the thread. I'm going to touch on to the workpiece now. Set me dial to zero. On my thread dial indicator, I'm going to engage on this mark here, I'm going to engage on any whole number. I'm just going to put a few th a couple of thou on and take the first cut. And if you want to get pedantic, use your thread gauge, and in my case, a magnifying glass just to check that you've got the pitch set correct now I know you can't see this through camera but well maybe you can but yeah that's all present and correct 0.8 pitch I'm only going to put a couple of thou at a time on I've got to go to a depth of 19 thou which is 0.49 of a mil. Uh, I'm only going to take a couple of thou at a time because I'm cutting it dry. I'm just going to show you this first one. So I'm engaging on any any whole any whole number on my dial. Now I'm getting down to the depth of the thread, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on, just to get a good finish.
when you go near to depth of your thread, the full depth, you need to start trying your, your nut on. Obviously you don't want to take too much off, but you just want another couple of thou off that, yeah. Nearly there. Just watch another. That's it, perfect, I'm happy with that. Right, I'm going to part it off now at 19mm. I'm going to mix five more of those with that thread on then I'm going to turn them round and put the three millimetre length of thread on the other end. Right, I've got all the components for the studs made one way. Uh, there's five there, I've got one in the lathe which I've just set up to do the other end. Uh, because I've got no metric collets with my lathe, I just work in Imperial. I've made uh, something to hold the existing threading that I've already cut on. I've tapped it at M5 and all I'm going to do is screw, screw these in to that tap towel and then I'm machining the thread on uh, just, just as, as I was in the, in the previous clip on the other end and I've only got to go three millimetre long on these that's half the components made now I've done the six studs so in the next uh, in the next video I'm going to make these radial T-nuts, um, six of those, that's going to fit onto the bottom of these studs and be locked tighted on. So that's part one, I'll do that in part two then, so uh, thanks for watching then and uh, if you've enjoyed that give me a subscribe and a, and a like and if you, if you feel like you could donate a little bit towards postage to USA We'd, we'd, we'd all appreciate that. Uh, so I'll see you on part two for the next, next uh, item on this. So thanks for watching then. Bye for now.